In this video, we'll answer the following questions. Suppose that you know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix A. Then what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A squared and A inverse? Now these are very good questions for improving your understanding of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, but these are also good questions for improving your mastery of the language of matrix algebra. So let's answer these questions. Let's use this equation as our starting point. This tells us that lambda in V are the eigenvalue eigenvector pair associated with the matrix A. Now let's multiply both sides of this equation by A on the left. So on the left hand side we would get A times A which is A squared of V. And on the right hand side we will have lambda which is just the number so it can come out to the left times A V. And of course we know what A V means, what A V is. A V is lambda V from the previous line. So the right hand side is lambda squared V. So what you see is that A squared V equals lambda squared V. So what this equation tells us is that V remains an eigenvector of the matrix A squared with lambda squared, the corresponding eigenvalue. So what we can say is, in summary, that A and A squared have identical eigenvectors and, their, and the eigenvalues of the matrix A squared are the squares of the eigenvalues of the matrix A. So same eigenvectors, related eigenvalues. Let's see what we can say about the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A inverse. Let me erase the board. All right, we'll use the same starting point as in the previous discussion, except now we'll multiply both sides by A inverse. And we have to acknowledge the fact that A inverse doesn't even exist if one of the eigenvalues equals zero. Those two statements are equivalent. The existence of the inverse and eigenvalues being non-zero. So, we, so for this discussion, we must assume that none of the eigenvalues is zero or else we couldn't even consider A inverse. So applying A inverse to both sides of the equation, we find, well, A inverse times A is of course identity and identity times V is V. So on the left hand side, we just have V. Let's see what we have on the right hand side. On the right hand side, we have similarly to the previous case, lambda, times A inverse V. All right, this almost looks like the eigenvalue sort of relationship, except we have to move lambda to the other side to really drive that point home. So we'll switch the sides and divide both sides by lambda. Why can we divide both sides by lambda? Because lambda is non-zero if we assume that the matrix has an inverse. So A inverse V equals 1 over lambda v. All right, and what's our interpretation of this equation? Well, our interpretation of this equation is that v, which was the eigenvector of the matrix A, is now an eigenvector of the matrix A inverse. So it remains an eigenvector. And what's the corresponding eigenvalue? Well, it's sitting right here. It's 1 over lambda. So the matrix A inverse and A, assuming that none of the eigenvalues is zero, have the same eigenvectors, and the eigenvalues of A inverse is, are the reciprocals of the eigenvalues of A. So that's the relationship. And of course, this relationship generalizes to any power of A. So in this problem, in this video so far, we have considered two different powers, two and negative one. But this statement would, of course, work for any power. Instead of a squared, we could have considered a to the n, applied the same logic, and we would have learned that the eigenvectors of a to the n are the same as the eigenvectors of a, and their eigenvalues are the eigenvalues of a raised to the nth power. And even this reciprocal can be interpreted as lambda to the power of negative 1. So the rule that we have just discovered is quite general. It works for positive powers of n, it works for n equals negative 1, and it actually works for any negative power of n as well. For example, a to the negative fifth 
which is the inverse of a raised to the fifth power, would have the exact same eigenvectors as the eigenvectors of a, and its eigenvalues will equal the eigenvalues of a raised to the power of negative 5. So this rule works for all integer powers of a. And we're also discovering that this notation works just as well for matrices as it does for ordinary numbers. And that powers of a obey many of the same rules as powers of ordinary numbers.